Hello and welcome back. It is Monday. I am Mr. Sosatris, and this week I'm looking at my TBR for the upcoming year and what books that I really, really want to make sure that I read in the next year as soon as possible. So there's kind of a long list here. Um, last year was very much about fantasy and um, myth retellings, that kind of stuff. And so this year I want to focus more on uh, science fiction. There's a lot of science fiction works out there, both new and old, that I haven't read yet that I really want to get get going with. Um, and so this is a list of the books that I'm most looking forward to reading uh, this upcoming year. I won't claim to read things like in a month because I am a mood reader and there's no way I can predict what I'm going to read month to month. But basing it on the full year, I think that's a safer bet. So I just got this recently, um, but I really want to read um, The Three-Body Problem. Um, this one is going to be turned into a Netflix series soon, and I don't know if it's going to be amazing or not. I don't know anything about it, but I do want to read the book first, and I do have the other two in the series, um, but I really want to read this. I'm really excited. Um, this is kind of one of those sci-fi novels that's kind of gotten a lot of hype recently, and I love that it's not... Um, like a North American author, and it's just kind of important to read like big high concept sci-fi that's not written with kind of a North American English like Western worldview. I think that's really interesting, so I cannot wait to read these. Next up, I really want to continue um, Rebecca Rowan Horse's uh, Black Sun trilogy. Uh, this is Fevered Star. It's the second one. The third book in the trilogy is coming out very soon. I've been putting off reading this. Um, I don't know why. I really love the first book. Um, the world building is fantastic. I love the idea of kind of a fantasy setting based on like pre-Columbian South American cultures. It's just really unique and the characters are great and um, I'm looking forward to reading this one. This is another one I talk about a lot but I haven't yet read because I've kind of been scared to read it, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and just do it. And that is Octavia E. Butler's The Parable of the Sower. I also have its sequel, The Parable of the Talents. This is a kind of dystopian uh, series or duology that sort of looks at what would happen if normal things that are happening today basically keep happening and it just gets worse and worse. Octavia Butler is an outstanding author. She's one of my favorites and I really really want to read this one because it's considered sort of one of her her best works. Um, I'm kind of scared to read it because it's all about like unfettered climate change and extreme right-wing demagogues that take over the government and it just it feels a little close to home. But now that we're kind of past the worst of the pandemic and, you know, everyone is vaccinated now and it's not as scary as it was, um, for most people, um, I think I'm in a good headspace to finally read this book. Next up is another book by an author that I really, really love, and that is another one by Dan Simmons. This one is Ilium. The sequel is called Olympus. And describing it is kind of difficult. It's basically, it's sci-fi, but it's like the Trojan War, but on Mars, somehow. And there's sci-fi things happening. So Olympus Mons on Mars becomes like the actual Mount Olympus. Um, and it's, you know, it's just, it seems so weird. And I love Dan Simmons anyways, because he is a uh, literature nerd and all of his books <clears throat> are just kind of ways for him to just geek out about how much he loves classic literature. And so obviously this one is going back to like the Iliad and the Odyssey and Greek epics. Um, and I cannot wait to see what he does with that in this book. Another book by an author that I really, really love. Um, I just picked this one up recently, um, but I know it's been around for a bit. And that is Kim, Kim Stanley Robinson's Red Moon. Um, this is not related to his Mars trilogy, which starts off with Red Mars. In this case, the red means something different because it's about sort of the moon being colonized um, by the Chinese government and um, a kind of complex plot that uh, comes out of that. Um, it's really great. I love Robinson's writing. He does hard sci-fi better than pretty much anybody I've read so far. Um, and I'm really, really excited to read this. There's been a lot of kind of 
books about sort of things happening on the moon as it's being colonized kind of thing. I'm thinking of like Mary Robinette Cole's The Restless Moon or, um, oh, what's his name? Andy Weir's Artemis. Um, <clears throat> and so this is kind of, it's that kind of genre of book, but um, I am so excited to read it just because I love Robinson's writing and the way he writes characters and the way he writes big picture stuff. It's just really cool. So I can't wait to read this one. This next one is one that I've been meaning to read for a while. I don't know if this is really considered an indie book, but it is something that sort of, you can only get it from sort of one bookstore in Ireland. And so I had it shipped across the pond and that is In Ascension by Martin McGuinness. Um, this one is sort of 2001-esque sci-fi and something found at the bottom of the ocean. So there's elements of like sphere. I haven't heard a whole lot about it except for the fact that it is fantastic and I cannot wait to read it. So this is a this is going to be pretty recent or pretty soon that I, I read this one. This next one is by an author I've not read before but I've heard lots of good things about them and I really want to check it out and that is The Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow. Um, this one I don't know a whole lot about it but it's got sort of cozy vibes, fantasy, witchcraft. I don't know. It just I heard an interview with the author on the Breaking the Glass Slipper podcast and they mentioned this and I was like, you know what? I really, really have to check this out. So I've not read anything by this author, but I've heard this is great. Cannot wait to dive into this one. I think this will be like a fall read. So, you know, October, November, we'll see, we'll see. Next up is uh, The Inheritance Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. I found this at like a used bookstore a year or so ago and um, I love N.K. Jemisin so much and so I really really want to read this one. It's, one. it's kind of scary because it's all three books in one binding so it looks like massive and overwhelming and scary but like if you look at like the page count it's only well 1400 pages that's a lot but it's a trilogy so it's not as scary because it's fine. It's fine. I, I do want to read this one. I will. This one's been on my TBR for a while, and I don't know why it's so, like, intimidating, but it's This Is How You Lose the Time War by Max Gladstone and Amal Imatar. And I think it's just because I've heard that the language is very poetic and um, very elegant and complex, and I don't know, I think I'm just scaring myself for no reason, because it's short. Um, so I just need to just read it. I, it's gotten nothing but rave reviews from everyone and um, I just need to just suck it up and read it. So this is on my list for this year. We'll see. The next one is um, another one that I heard about from the Breaking the Glass Slipper podcast and that is The Archive Undying by Emma Miko Kandon. And this one, I don't know, it just the concept behind it sounds so cool. It's got like AI and subjugation of humanity and there's these gods that are like entirely digital, which kind of reminds me a lot of like the Hyperion Cantos by Dan Simmons, which is another one that I just absolutely love. And it just, this just strikes me as something that I would be really, really into. Um, this author is also the author of one of the weirdest but coolest Star Wars novels that have come out recently, and that's Ronin, which is like an alternate universe Star Wars, which is based on the short, uh, The Duel from Star Wars Visions. And it was, they kind of extrapolated from that short, sort of an entire alternate version of the Star Wars universe where things played out very differently. And there's sort of more, um, Japanese cultural influences and in certain aspects of things and it was just it was really interesting the world building is just fantastic and so I can't wait to read um, kind of her work outside of a pre-existing world so we'll see how this goes I'm really excited next up is some more classic stuff um, I recently got um, a good translation of Charles Baudelaire's The Flowers of Evil or Fleur de Mal um, this is a poem. It's a modernist poem. It was considered really um, controversial at the time. It ruffled a lot of feathers and it's sort of really important to sort of the modernist canon. And um, 
Baudelaire has been kind of a, a blank spot for me. I read like excerpts of his poems in college, but I really want to read like the actual thing. And this is a dual text version, which is great because it has like the original French on this side and then it has the English translation on this side. So if you ever need to like really dig into the nitty gritty of like what words were used, um, you can kind of see how that goes. So we'll see how this how this uh, goes, because um, I really, really love modernist poetry. Um, T.S. Eliot is amazing, and I love him so much, and so it's going to be really exciting to see sort of um, one of the other great kind of poetic works of the early 20th century. This is another one that I picked up a while ago, um, and it's Shadi Bart's translation of the Aeneid. Um, the Aeneid is not one that I've read as much as like the Iliad and the Odyssey. I have like a million translations of both of those and I've read them a million times and I love them so much but the Aeneids one I've only read like maybe once um, and I saw this translation and it looked really really interesting so I'm gonna check this one out um, because we all need more epic poetry in our world um, just for funsies I don't know do people still say that is that a thing? I don't know okay moving on I want to continue my read through of Toni Morrison's bibliography. And so this year I'm going to be tackling the Song of Solomon. This one's a little bit longer um, than some of her other ones. Um, again, everything she writes is gorgeous and incredible. So I cannot wait to read this one. I've also been having some trouble finding some of her other books. I know um, this one and Jazz are the other two that I've managed to find that I haven't read yet, but I know she has other books like Tar Baby. Um, and for some reason they're difficult to find because I don't know bookstores only like to carry kind of her greatest hits um, but um, I do want to read this one um, and I know I'm gonna love it because I love everything Morrison's ever written ever <coughs> and again I say this a lot but I do want to read oh there's a spider on the book look at that um, the brothers Karamazov by Dostoevsky. Okay, spider, you're gonna get squished. Is that a scary spider? Is that like poisonous? I don't think so. I think it's just a house spider. I don't know, whatever, it's fine. Um, but The Brothers Karamazov, I do want to read this one. I keep putting it off um, and I just need to stop doing that. Stop being such a baby and just read it. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. Okay, yeah. all right. Yes, I know, seriously. Here, do you want a spider? Yeah, yeah look, it's a spider. Oh my goodness. Okay, she's going to play with the spider now and it's fine. It's good. Anyways, um, so that's sort of my main big TBR. I'm probably going to read a lot of like fluff in between all of that. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Um, but these are the books that I for sure want to read this year. And so I'm making this video to keep myself accountable. So we'll see how that goes. Anyways, moving on. I will see you next week. You enjoy your reading. And if you're in an area that's affected by the extreme cold, stay warm and read some more because it's just healthy. Do it. Bye. Hi, baby. Do you want to do the video? Yeah. May I help you? Which one do you want to read? You can't decide?